Once upon a time, the infamous rover Renardo plundered the floating isles. Then his mother called him to her deathbed. Swear to me that you won't die on the gallows. She rasped. Reluctantly, he swore. And he whiled away his days at home with music, cards, and wine. But the Emperor had changed. He'd been good once, a shy, almost humble toad. He'd built universities. But then people started whispering about mass graves in the woods, midnight rituals, victims screaming. The Imperial Ravens would round up entire villages, and no one ever returned. The Ravens had come to Ubar scouting for ancient books said to be of great power. But the librarians had hidden the books, so they'd burnt the librarians. The citizens, outraged, had driven them off. The Ravens had come back with drop ships. The kid had fled with one of those books. He was brave and dumb and wanted to join the rebellion. And Renardo had promised his mother he'd protect him. The kid was looking down, watching his city burn. Sorry, kid, Renato told the kid. Look, if we give them the book, they'll leave you alone. My mother died for this book! I promised her I'd protect you. Oh, damn it. The kid had run off. With the book, of course. So Renato had to run after him. Two ravens were staring at the kid like he was their dinner, which probably was what was in their tiny brains. Hey, Renato said. They cocked their heads at him. Pick on someone as ugly as you. Wait, that didn't come out right. For the Emperor! The ravens cawed and rushed at him. <laughs> dropship flew overhead. He hoped they hadn't noticed him. The kid. gate of heroes. Someone's idea of a joke, making the Skyship Docks a gated community. You needed a hero's sword to open it. And the kid was on the other side of the gate. Who let you through? Promise me you'll take the book to the rebels. Or I'm gonna steal your ship. I'm not taking that damn book anywhere. And neither are you. Try and stop me, laughed the kid. I bet you don't even have a hero's sword. And with that, the kid hopped away. Had to hand it to the kid. He was an idiot, but he had guts. Where was Renardo going to get a hero sword? Or and wind essence? Perfect. Hero Sword, QED.
This is what he got for settling down and finding people to care about. The kid's mum had been a swell cook, and she'd laughed at Renato's jokes, even when he didn't know he'd made one. And then the ravens had come to burn her, and she'd made him promise to protect the kid. But she never told him where the book was, just the kid. He came up to a ledge. It was too far to jump. There'd been a bridge here before, hadn't there? And there was Peter, giggling at him. How'd you get across? He asked the kid. Where'd you find a hook? I harped, said the kid. White ass kid. Hey, look out behind you. Cute, said Renardo. Ah, oh, ravens. It was time to talk some sense into the kid. Just hook his way across the ledge and chase the kid down. Thing was, he hadn't used his hook since he'd retired. He done it. Maybe if he meditated at that altar there, he'd remember his old skills. Starting to come back to him. Something you never completely forgot. Like how to freeze time when attacking. The more he fought, the more he'd probably remember. And there was the Farfarer. She was the fastest ship he'd ever known. She could do the Kester run in 12 furlongs. Oh, so the salesman had told him. And something told him the kid was about to walk into an ambush. Stop! He shouted. I'm not giving you the book! Shouted the kid and took off. No! Peter! But the kid ran for it. And a goggler nailed him with its eye beam. <laughs> the book was unburned. Next to it were the buckles from the kid's shoes and a kid-sized pile of ashes. Damn it. Why hadn't he lied and told the kid he'd take the book to the rebels? The kid would be alive now. Really pissed off and betrayed, but alive. Oh, damn it. Renardo picked up the book. He couldn't let the Empire have it now. He was going to have to get it out of there. He'd be a wanted man. Probably have to join the rebellion just to have a place to dock. Well, he'd hated home life anyway. this book anyway. Maybe he should open it and find out. All that had been years ago. How many? The war was a blur. And now three raven scout ships were chasing him. Where are you running, rebel? Cored the raven captain over the loud hailer. Renato could see them cranking up their catapults. Just going out for milk? Renato yelled back. Where can you run? Laughed the raven horribly. Far behind him, another city was burning. The dark cloud above its island was thousands of Imperial ships. The fleet was doing a thorough job. Take us to the rebel base and we'll spare your life. It cawed. The entire jury-rigged rebel fleet was only a few islands to the east. Beyond that were only the pillars of heaven sea of endless blood-colored tornadoes. The rebellion was out of time. Unless Renardo could bring a game-changer. Maybe he could. Renardo had found out where he could find the pieces of the Sky Ripper, the legendary weapon that had exiled the lost gods. 
Surely a legendary weapon could win the final battle. On the other hand, his old friend Lupino had sent Renato a desperate message saying he had a brilliant scheme to save the rebellion. If Renato could only rescue him. Renato dived the farfarer towards the abyss. As he felt the heat of the jet stream, the raven ships peeled off, not stable enough to follow him down there. Now it was time to choose. Lapino or the Sky Ripper. the mad rabbit had sold a pegasus that he did not exactly own. Lapino always wiggled out of trouble, given time. But he was out of time. The ravens had figured out that Lapino was a rebel spy. If the fleet reached him first, they'd string him up for that. Never mind the winged horse. Lapino had apparently managed to confuse the judge by arguing that he hadn't actually stolen the winged horse. He'd only sold it, but wait, where was the prison? The village was empty. Had, had everybody fled the ravens? There was an inscription, Praise the Sun. The ravens had taken the town. Renato had seen villages emptied like this. All the people taken away to be sacrificed in the Emperor's secret rituals. Renato hoped the people were just hiding. Renato's blood was up. He just needed to smash something. Ravens were landing everywhere. The advance guard. He'd better get moving. If they got to Lupino first, they'd eat him for breakfast. Or a snack. Ravens weren't picky. If they got hungry, they sometimes forgot to interrogate their prisoners. Even top spies like Lupino. Where had the mad rabbit got to? <laughs> Renato felt like he was ready to learn new things. 
And good. It was starting to come back to him. Something you never completely forgot. Like how to freeze time when attacking. The more he fought, the more he'd probably remember. Dead, you're not a thought. Dirty and bloody, Renato finally reached Lapino. The rabbit was practicing his shuffle. Renato recognized the cards. It was Lapino's favorite deck. Oh, I thought you were in danger. I am. The ravens are coming. Oh, the prison thing. Right, yeah, we see this guard owed me 53 ducats, so we made a deal. They're very reasonable people, actually, for weasels. Now, I got a brilliant plan to kidnap Zenobia. We... Captures Zenobia, we find out what she knows. And that's the whole war right there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Capture the Emperor's greatest general, who also happened to be a deadly sorcerer and oh, his only daughter? That would be worth it. On the other hand, he could still get to the core of the Sky Ripper, even if he couldn't get the whole thing. It must have great power. Zenobia wasn't just the Emperor's daughter, of course. She'd been Renato's best friend in Swordfu school. And you're still mad for her, the rabbit reminded him. They'd been close. She'd told him things no one else knew. But she'd never told him who she really was. She knows all the Emperor's plans, chuckled the master spy. She won't give them up easily. <laughs> She'll tell the interrogators, all right said Lapino. Taking her would change the game, all right. <laughs> 